bearded bastards and welcome to another of my short fortress episodes. Today we'll be taking a look at one of the fundamental aspects of dwarven life, and an aspect I really haven't touched on that much in my dwarf fortress playthroughs. Now that aspect, of course, is magma. Yes, the very lifeblood of the earth. You know, it really is a shame I haven't done that much with it in the past. It's such an interesting part of the game, very difficult to master I imagine, but once you learn all the ups and downs of it, there's gotta be a bunch of benefits, right? Magma forges, devious traps. I plan on doing a lot more with it in my next series, and so I figured it would be for the best if I just, you know, kind of tested it out a little bit first, played around with magma, you know, just try to kind of get a feel for it. Now let's see, I haven't yet done anything, we don't even have a world to play in yet, so first of all we're going to create a new world. And we're not looking for anything too fancy here, we'll just make a, make a small world, keep everything fairly standard. Yeah, you know, this looks pretty good, we'll go with this. Okay, and here we go, the world is being created as we speak. I do see a volcano right there, next to this uh, dwarven civilization. I'll tell you what, this is probably good enough. Done. Okay. This is probably gonna do the trick, so we will use this world. Gonna take a quick look around here. The one volcano I'm seeing so far is up on the, the northern side of this mountain range here, this little red icon, and it's looking like that's the only one in the world. Let's hope it works. And now we will start playing. Dwarf Fortress mode. Alright, now we will move over to this volcano, over here in this uh, temperate freshwater marsh. Kind of an odd place for a volcano in my opinion, but hell, we can make it work I suppose. Yeah, sure. Embark. And we will play now. Prepare for journey carefully, come now. Preparations. You have arrived after a journey from the mountain homes into the forbidding wilderness beyond. Your harsh trek has finally ended. Your party of seven is to make an outpost for the glory of all of Kog Zersul. There are almost no supplies left, but with stout labor comes sustenance, whether by bolt, plow, or hook. Provide for your dwarves. You are expecting a supply caravan just before the winter entombs you. But it is spring now. Enough time to delve secure lodgings, ere the dingoes get hungry. A new chapter of dwarven history begins here at this place. Ten Shedasta. Chance to swords. Strike the earth. Strike we shall. Alright, first thing we're going to do is pause the game and have a little look around here. Alright, it looks like my, my dwarves are on some sort of a, a rocky outcropping. Very strange looking. Let's zoom out a little bit, shall we? There we are. Now then, um, okay. Looks like they embarked on the very highest point of this entire map. And if we look down, 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 down. Wow, this is, this is a strange, strange mountain. What an odd shape. What the hell? Okay. Um, all right. So this is a, a very peculiar looking volcano, I would say. So here we are at the, uh, the ground level in this swamp. And if we go up, we can see this volcano, the full shape, very odd. And so these dwarves are currently perched on the very highest point at the lip of this volcano. Lord knows why they decided to drag their wagon all the way up here, but hey, to each their own, I won't judge. Now looking back down to this level here, and zooming back in, you can see that this uh, volcano tube is right next to this swamp area here. I think that would make a fantastic entrance to our fortress, and so that's where we'll make it. Now the very first thing we'll do is chop down all these trees here, so we can have some wood and a little breathing room, and we'll also crack a little hole into the side of this lava tube. Take a look in there. Okay, there we are. Okay, now that we're in, hmm, very cool. Um, trying to think what we could do with this place. Now there are some things I'm going to want to test out in this episode. First, I'd like to find out if there's a way to safely dig into a, a an active volcano tube, like down here. If a dwarf were to dig into the side of this lava tube here, then they would be engulfed by lava, magma, whatever it's called, like immediately. Picture that, you know, like just carving away that stone, the lava would just flow in, engulf them. I've had it happen many times in the past, because again, I'm not very good at using magma, lava, whatever it's called. All right, I actually just looked it up. Magma is below ground, while lava is above ground. Lava is what you see when a volcano erupts, and it's all over the place. Anyways, I'm going to want to test out a couple ways to dig into the side of this thing to try to do that safely. I have done it safely in the past, but I'm pretty sure it's just by luck. But we'll see what happens. And another thing I would love to do is see if we could figure out some sort of a, a way to utilize this as a trap. And of course, when I say that, the first thing that comes to your mind is dumping lava on intruders. Sure, we could do that, but that's the first thing that comes to your mind. That's kind of boring in my opinion. And so we're going to want to try to figure out some other way to utilize magma. And I'm not too sure what that way would be, but we'll figure it out. 
And those are my two first main goals. Now, the first thing I'm gonna do is get these dwarves all situated, all these uh, villager peasant sorts up here. I see we have a couple of useless dwarves, like a jeweler and a fish cleaner, a fisher dwarf, unnecessary. Yep, gonna have to get that cleaned up. And uh, I'm also gonna go down to that volcano and kind of dig it out a little bit, make it a little bit more cozy. I'll get back to you if anything interesting happens in the meantime though, so no worries there. Oh, here one second. I actually realized we haven't really had a look at uh, our dwarves here. Ten Shedesta. That's the name of this fortress here, which means chanced swords. And let's take a look at one of our dwarves here. How about Ral, the expedition leader? All right, well, it looks like the name of this dwarven group is the Ink of Clasping. Kind of a boring name, really. And Ral is, uh, looks like he's 79 years old, so middle-aged about for a dwarf. And as far as his appearance goes, he has loaded a tall body with incredible muscles. His very long sideburns are neatly combed. His very long mustache is neatly combed as well. His long beard is braided. His hair is clean shaven. His nose bridge is convex. His hair is light brown. His skin is brown. All right, fairly typical for a dwarf, really. It is interesting that he is tall and loaded with incredible muscles. He seems like an appropriate expedition leader to have led these dwarves to a volcano in the middle of a swamp, I would say. A real dwarven superhero. Pretty cool. Oh, and kind of funny, I just noticed it says down here he has little time for forgiveness and will generally seek retribution. <laughs> Perfect. I like him. So again, I'm going to get right to work, clean this place up a little bit, and try to figure out some plans for traps. How does that sound? I will be right back. Okay, good. The merchants have arrived. Now let's take a look back at the fortress. We have cleaned it up quite a bit now. You can see we have a couple of workshops out here. Currently occupied by dwarves who are desperately trying to make drinks for my other dwarves. Yeah, we're not in the best place at the moment, drink-wise. But that's a side note. Uh, let's take a look down, move up a bit. And here you can see now, uh, I made a path around the outside perimeter of this lava in the volcano. Okay? So to get into the actual fortress, you have to go around this entire lava pool. And now what I'm thinking, I don't know if this will work. But I want to uh, go up a ways, maybe like right here or something, and I want to construct something that could drop down into this lava right next to this walkway so that if we do have invaders show up, then I could just drop stuff down into this lava. And when you do that, there's this lava mist that will come out in these big clouds whenever you do that. And anything that breathes that in is going to be dead. And I'm pretty sure it can set things on fire too, which is pretty cool. It's something I've always wanted to try, but I'm not sure if it's going to work, but we shall see. Now let's see, other than that, there's really not too much to talk about. I've got these two little walkways here set up so I can actually make some magma related workshops. Magma smelter, magma forge, you know, there's a trade depot here. And then if we go down to this level, you can see our tiny dinky meeting hall and our tiny crappy bedrooms, as well as this workshop area here. This is the entire fortress. It's not much to talk about really. As I was saying earlier, we actually have nothing to drink. Now, I was starting to get pretty scared that dwarves would start dying, but I think we're good now. All of the dwarves are currently out here gathering plants, except for these two who are brewing them into stuff to drink. So yeah, I think we're doing pretty okay on that front, thankfully. Oh, and another thing I should mention, I guess. Uh, the entire first part of the episode that you heard, like the intro and stuff, uh, I did not have a cold. I'm pretty sure I've got a cold now, though. So if I sound different, that's why. But we gotta stay frosty because we have some magma to deal with. You can see the merchants entering the fortress here, having to go around this walkway. Yeah, I kind of like this. For now, anyways. Hopefully it ends up working out, huh? Now, as for this, uh, this dropping system I'm thinking of, I feel like it's gonna be a gigantic pain in the butt. Alright, so I just ordered this little uh, tunnel here to be built off the side of this main chamber. And in doing so, I, I finally was able to realize what a gigantic pain in the ass this is going to be. Now, if we look up here, I ordered this tunnel to be dug around this main lava chamber with four little tunnels poking into the main chamber. And at this level, we will build the floors or walls that we will drop into the lava. Magma. Whatever. And then up above it, I built another similar ring with four little holes being dug in the same places. At this level, we will build supports, which will be used to hold up the things that we will drop down into the magma. And then up above it, I built another similar ring with four similar holes. And at this level, we will build the actual anchoring structures that will hold up those supports, which will in turn be holding up the things that we will drop down into the magma. Whew. Does that make sense? Anchoring supports, supports, and then the magma dropping pieces. It's all gonna work out, you're gonna have to believe me. Oh, and here we have an artifact. Our first in the fortress, Reg Kustith Moral, the woodcrafter, has created Nistlised Usan Stool, a ashen scepter. He claims it as an heirloom in the name of the family ancestor, Odom Blotrings. Sounds like a terribly boring artifact, but let's take a look. Fear marked. 
The Murder of Maws. Ooh, as far as names go, that one's pretty badass, actually. This is a Ashen Scepter. All Kraftorf ship is of the highest quality. This object is adorned with hanging rings of ash. On the item is an image of a diamond in ash. All right, well, really kind of boring. That name, though, wow. Fear marked the murder of Maws. Really kind of a shame that this lame-ass artifact has such a badass name. Oh, well. Back here, up at the lava chamber, if we look up one level, I've begun work on these sections of flooring that will be dropped down into the magma. Now, I, I realize they look a bit irregular at the moment, but I figure if I make them kind of long and winding so that they reach around the outside perimeter of this magma pool down here, then I can end up using less supports, less mechanisms, less work overall. And I'm always a fan of that. Now, the biggest pain in the ass of this whole system here is going to be resetting it every single time we use it. But I suppose if I can kill invaders using magma mist, it'll be totally worth it. All right, now looking around, it looks like the, uh, the our trap is almost finished, really. We do still have a little ways to go, though, so I'm just going to finish off the rest off screen. And I'll get back to you when it's finished. Or if something ridiculous happens, I will be right back. And there we have it. Our Magma Mist Dropping Chamber Trap is completed, I believe. The supports are set up and they're all linked up to levers down in the meeting hall, and they're all ready to be dropped down into the magma. Yes, I think we're actually looking pretty good. Now, you see, the finicky part of this episode is going to be whether or not we ever get attacked by goblins. I'm seriously hoping we do, but we might not, or it might end up taking a very long time. But if we take a look up in the top corner here, we can see the human caravan has arrived. Now, it's their first time to our fortress, and we don't really have a beef with them, but, you know, um, I really want to test this out. <laughs> so I'm thinking, uh, we, you know, we try it on the humans. What do you say? Yeah, let's do it. Now I'm going to set up a new burrow here, down in this living area here. All right, and that's all set up. Now all dwarves get to the living level, please. Uh, thank you. And everyone should be heading there now. Now just a quick overview here, just in case you don't know what's going on. There are four sections of flooring here. One over here, one up here, one over on this side, and then one down here. And each of these irregularly shaped sections is connected by a support right here, to an anchor up above right here. Now, when we pull one of these four levers in this tiny room here, we can choose which one of those four sections falls down into the magma. So we do have four attempts with this. All right, dwarves, you ready? Let's do this. Game is unpaused. Everybody's making their way to the living level here in the fortress. And here come the humans. Come on, dwarves, do not tarry. Bunch of slow dwarves here, come on. Oh, and here come the humans around the side of the volcano. Here they come, entering the fortress. I'm gonna let them continue down this path just a little bit right there should be good now we're gonna start pulling some levers we'll start with this one here pull the lever please thank you now let's watch and nothing nothing at all oh man what a dummy i had these sections of flooring in place here so it wouldn't have fallen that is totally my fault i <laughs> am so sorry for that build up and i suppose i could have edited this out too but uh you know i like to mess with you guys so here we are We'll get them next time, no worries. <laughs> All the dwarves resume their work, glaring angrily at the humans, rat bastards. Well, as long as they're here, we might as well do some trading, I suppose. We actually did have an enormous migrant wave show up just moments before I started recording just now. And we're up to 55 dwarves. Our food and drink supplies are a hurtin', big time. But it shouldn't be a problem. Well, anywho, sorry about that false alarm, guys. I'm gonna do some trading with these humans here, reset those traps. Oh, and actually, you know, before we head out of here, let's take a look at our expedition leader again. Ral, the miner, currently down in these mines here. I'm starting to picture him sort of like a, like a madman, I suppose. Mostly because he led his dwarves here to this volcano in the middle of a swamp and decided to perch his wagon up on top of the lip of this volcano here. I mean, that seems kind of insane and totally awesome. And I've also been constructing these gold statues of Ral and placing them all over the place. Yeah, I'm really starting to think the whole expedition leader thing is going to his head. I mean, he ordered these traps to be built, tried to kill some humans already. I mean, what's wrong with this guy? Other than just being totally awesome anyways. <laughs> yeah, I like him. A real dwarf's dwarf. Well, anyways. Oh, and I just realized besides these traps, we still have to figure out a way to dig into lava safely. Hmm. That's not going to go well. Yeah, I gotta figure out a way to do that. And I should have one all set up next time I see you. But for now, I will be right back. Welcome back. Now, things have been advancing here in Chanced Swords. For one, our, our now mayor, Ral, has, I, I think, has gone off the deep end. Now, he is our mayor now. The dwarves have been voting, and they didn't initially vote him in. Instead, they had voted in uh, Addis, the miller, up here. Oh, and there he goes, down into the magma. Yeah, as I said, things are, are getting a bit rough here in the fortress. And if we take a look over here, we could see Ral's room. It's uh, quite spacious. 
many statues of Ral all over the place, including in his grand entry hall here. There are now a couple of gold cages and restraints in his bedroom that he kind of uses as a prison. This guy here violated a production order. Ral has been demanding that we forge helmets, but unfortunately we don't have any metal that we can use, so there's not much we can do about that. So yeah, these dwarves get chained up unfortunately. But luckily the dwarves don't feel too bad about it. That's a dwarf for you. Most of their time in this prison is just spent admiring their golden chain. Either that or they also admire this hammer on the floor. This is the one that Ral uses to beat prisoners. He hasn't killed anybody yet, but uh, he seems to enjoy it all too much. And by the way, this hammer, it's not an artifact, but it is a well-crafted bronze warhammer. It is encircled with bands of exceptionally worked pond turtle shell, which is pretty awesome. And it also menaces with spikes of native gold. Very cool. I just figured I'd show that real quick. Now anyways, now a little note before we continue any farther. I'm recording this a day after that previous bit there, and my cold has advanced a little farther. So you might be able to hear it in my voice now, and I'm terribly sorry for that. But anyways, now if we have a look over here, you can see I've set up a little area where we can try digging into this magma. Now I have these four little channels here, each with a ramp at the end that lead up to this tunnel right here. Now a little note, unlike water, if I were to dig into here and magma was to rush into these tunnels, it wouldn't continue up to this level and then up this staircase over here because that's just not how magma works. It doesn't have that kind of pressure. Water would. But having magma in these tunnels right here should not be a problem, I don't think. Again, I don't know that much about magma. Now, okay, let's see here. This first tunnel right here, I'm just going to try digging through to the magma and see what happens. I have had this work successfully in the past, but I feel like it's always lucky when it does work. Let's give it a shot. Just going to dig out this little section right here. Let's see how this goes. Okay, digging, digging, and oh, did they make it? Oh, he's actually caught in this magma right here. Ooh, that's not great. Yeah, that's that's not great at all. You know, unfortunately, I don't think he's long for this world. Let's follow him and find out. And... Nope. That's a shame. Alright, and here we can see the magma is not rushing up into this higher tunnel. So we are good on that front. Good. Okay, next tunnel. Now, you see, this one here, I've set up a pressure plate that is triggered by magma. And right here, one space above it, I've set up a floodgate that is now open. So my hope is that magma will rush in, hit this pressure plate and then that floodgate will close really quick. I guess we'll see. Here we go. Okay, that is set to be mined. Someone is on their way. They are mining, and... Oh, they... I don't think they made it, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure they melted as well. Yeah, that's a shame. Well, let's see how this pans out. I will follow him as well. And... Oh, he's melted. Now, the question is, did that floodgate actually shut? I'm not sure if it did. Kind of hard to tell. All the smoke is in the way. No? Is that a no? Okay. Well, it certainly didn't prevent this tunnel from being flooded with magma. I wish I could say I was learning something from all this, but nothing yet. Now, we do still have these two tunnels over here, little short tunnels, and I want to try a different technique for each. Oh, hey now, the elven caravan has arrived. Oh man, bad timing, elves. Um, I'll tell you what, we're going to hold off in these last two sections because I really want to see if that trap works. Okay, all dwarves to the living level, please. Good job, good job, dwarves. There you go. Fantastic, everyone in. Okay, and I'm fairly certain all the dwarves made it in safely. Good, good, good. And here come the elves up the side of the volcano, heading down now. Now, I double-checked these traps and everything should be a go. That's what I'm hoping anyways. Now, I'm going to wait for these guys to hit the end. And, you know, I'm actually going to try to set off this top left section here first. I'll just let them advance a little farther. And we should be good right there. Okay, here goes nothing. Let's watch. Please work, please work, please work. And? Come on. Come on. Oh, okay, okay. So, so it did definitely collapse this time. I'm not sure if this will do the trick, but let's see. Oh boy, yeah, that was kind of ugly. Um, that does not look to have done the trick, unfortunately. But it does look like we knocked one of the elves into the magma, so that's better than nothing, I guess. And then this guy over here is just stunned, apparently. Well, this guy here just continued on without the other two. Hey, whatever, come on in. We'll get him next time. Now note that we did see that magma mist. It just didn't come out far enough into the walkway. Man, I thought that was going to be a really good idea, too. Oh, well. I'm still trying to think of a way I can utilize that, though. Oh, you know, I just noticed these elves are leaving. Eh, let's send them off in memorable fashion. All dwarves back in, please. Thank you. Pull the lever, please. Thank you. Okay, let's see how this goes. I'm going to drop the southeast section now. And... Okay, there we go. Seems to be a good hit, too. Let's see what happens. Okay, all right. All right, it, look, it looks like the elves just disappeared that time. And it looks like a little bit of this mist came out. Oh, yeah. Looks like I got them. Fantastic. Currently melting down in this volcano tube. Well, see you later, elves. 
Okay, well, unfortunately, it looks like that trap system is a bust, but now we know anyways. So, that's good. I think a better idea would be to drop magma down from a higher level. That way, we wouldn't get any of that cave-in dust, those gray clouds we were seeing. Kind of messes everything up, you know? I'm a purist. I want to be able to kill people with magma mist alone, but maybe that's just me. So, I think the best thing to do would be to pump magma up to a higher level, then drop it down. Hmm... Something to think about, certainly, but I don't think I'm going to be doing that in this episode. Mainly because it would be a gigantic pain in the ass. I'd rather just try it out when I do my next big series, you know? Anyways, let's take a look down here. Now, we do still have these two small tunnels left. And, let's see, I'm going to try to dig a ramp upwards right here. So, when I do that, it's not only going to destroy this block right here, it's going to destroy this block above it as well. I can't imagine that's going to help very much. In fact, more lava's going to be coming in. But, I guess you never know, right? Let's see. Someone's coming. And? Oh, I don't think they made it. Oh, it's quite a shame. Oh my god, I, I am a monster, everyone. I'm a total monster. Okay, the miner did make it. Oh, wow. Yeah, I'm a bad person. But, it looks like they were holding their baby. Oh, man. Yeah, I'm, I'm not, not a good person. The baby didn't make it. But the miner is still kicking. Uh, for now, anyways. I believe they're on fire, though. Well, let's see what comes of this. Nothing great, I'm sure. Okay, and, um... Hmm... Okay. Yeah, I think... I think they melted. Pretty sure they melted. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it was a good try, I suppose. Well, yeah, I'm a bad person, huh? Now the next tunnel. This one, I'm going to try to channel out this last piece right here. This is similar to making a ramp, except it will destroy this block and the one below it. I think this has a much better chance at succeeding, but I suppose we'll see. Here goes nothing. Okay, and here comes someone. And... Okay, uh, oh, they survived. Fantastic. Yeah, I feel like that's going to be the best way to do it. Because it gets rid of the block at the end and the one below it, I think it takes the magma just a split second longer to fill up the tunnel which is a bit safer. However, do note that the tunnel is completely filled up with magma now, and this is only seconds later. But yeah, this guy looks like he's good. Fantastic. Good job, dude. And now I'm thinking that because we figured out a way to actually dig into magma like that, I think we should explore that a tiny bit more because I, I've had an idea. Now, if we look down here, down this long staircase right here, uh, we just dug into this cavern underground. Quite an expansive cavern network, it would seem. And I'm actually fairly interested in seeing if we could drain this magma out and make this magma tube uh, be completely empty. I'm curious to see how fast it will drain out, what effect it will have on the underground. And so I'm going to hop right to it. Now I'm thinking if I dig a little tunnel like this over to the magma, and then right here we make a channel like we did above, then our miner's going to carve out that block right next to the magma, as well as the block below, right here, which is connected to the cavern. So that should be completely safe, I'm thinking. Not too worried about it. Let's see how it works. Okay, almost there. And... Okay, we have broken through and magma is entering this tunnel here. A uh, bit unexpected. Shouldn't be a big problem though. And if we look underneath here, magma is as well going into the caverns now. Very good. Now I imagine in order to get rid of all the magma in this tube, we're going to have to do that quite a bit. Just so the magma is coming out in all directions in the cavern. It should speed up the process. Oh, we can now see a section of cavern has collapsed. A mushroom, I believe, whose stalk was just burned away by magma. I think that's what happened anyways. Yeah, the caverns are filling right up with magma. And I do see fires now for sure. Very cool. Got some more of that mist there as well. And we're working on another magma tube. Right there. The magma is starting to go down up in this magma chamber here. Slowly but surely. We need more drainage. More tunnels. Yeah, there's a fair bit of chaos out here in the caves now. With all this magma and water combining. Clouds of steam and magma mist all over the place. Fires popping up here and there. It is interesting how these caverns can be peaceful for what I assume to be uh, many thousands of years. And then, almost the moment the dwarves break into them, it's just unadulterated chaos. <laughs> oh, dwarves. We have another tunnel here being dug by Ral himself. Here he goes. And success, he did not melt. Fantastic. Boy, the magma is really starting to go down here. Big time. Fairly quickly, actually. But still not quick enough. Now, here's an interesting one. I actually discovered a tunnel over here that if I dig it, it will release magma into this second lava pool down below. And we'll actually get to see how much magma mist is generated by this activity. And here comes Madman Ral, ever eager to discover more magma-related antics. There's a dwarf. 
All right, there we go. You know, I also think we make a little, uh, like a funnel for the magma to go through, just so we can get the magma to flow into like, like the middle of this chamber. If it's up against the wall falling into the magma, like a waterfall, there might not be as much magma mist. So just a second. All right, and that's probably long enough right there, I would imagine. That'll get the job done. Oh, and I just noticed that the dwarves actually voted in a different dwarf as mayor, again. Well, let's get him up to the platform, right after we dig out this last portion right here, that is. Okay, it is dug out. All right, now it's flowing out of the channel. And it's falling. And... Nothing, no mist. Well, that's kind of annoying. How do you get magma mist? I suppose I have to look into it. Oh well, we'll figure it out in time. Oh and good, it looks like somebody brought the current mare up to the diving platform here. And unfortunately it seems there's a couple children up there as well. I don't particularly want them to fall into the magma. But I'm sure Ral doesn't care. Pull the lever please. Please note that there is currently another dwarf starving to death in his prison. Just a side note really. And there they go. Down into the magma, wow that is... That's a one hell of a way to go, I'll tell ya. Anyways, yes, the magma level here in the main cavern has dropped quite a bit now. A few levels. We're still trying to get some more tubes carved out, but it is taking quite a bit. But it's getting there. Yeah, this is all working out pretty well, I'd say. I'm actually learning a lot more than I thought I would from doing this. Which is great. It'll really help me out in the future. Something neat I noticed, if you look down in the cavern here, uh, pretty much every place you see magma right here used to be water. And if we take a look a level down underneath, all the water that was there is now stone. So the magma kind of runs over top the water, turns it to stone, and then continues on in a very thin sheet. Like if we take a look at this magma, it tends to not be too, too thick in places. As long as it's not seven of seven depth, then it will eventually evaporate as far as I know. So it might be a neat idea to try this, fill up a cavern with magma, have all the water turned to stone, and then you can find some way to shut off the magma, let it all evaporate, or harden, I guess, and then just use it as the floor of a new cavern. Something to consider going forward anyways. Well, you know what guys, I think that's actually going to be enough for today. Now let's see, a little review. We really didn't learn that much uh, applicable information, I don't think, other than things we can't do, I suppose. Magma Mist is way more confusing than it sounds to generate. I figured it would be kind of straightforward, but I really guess it's not. Now I did look online, and it looks like the best way to generate Magma Mist is to have your dwarves drop items into magma. The heavier, the better, from what I understand. Of course, this is still completely untested. I'm not sure how it would actually work, but it looks like a much more promising way to do it, and I'll have to try that out in the future. I also learned that draining magma into another pool of magma does not make magma mist, which is actually a pretty good thing. I don't have to be afraid of magma mist if I ever want to make magma dripping down inside one of my fortresses in the future, which is great. All right, let's see what else we get. We learned how to fairly safely dig into magma, I'd say. After those first few mishaps, I actually didn't have any further trouble with it. And you know, actually, I think the most important thing we learned today is that being an expedition leader can actually kind of go to your head over time. Oh, Ral, you crazy dwarf. I sure hope he makes out well in the future. And I have the distinct feeling that he's going to do just fine. Also, one more quick little bit of information here. I know I've mentioned starting my Big Next series at some point in the future. And it's not that I'm holding off just because I don't want to do it. It's just that I know Toadie's still working out a couple of big old bugs. I don't want to make sure all the big bugs are squashed before I start the play. It would totally suck if I started a brand new world, got everyone situated, and then there was a new update that I couldn't update those save files to. I mean, that would ruin everything, and I don't want that to happen. So, I'm just going to keep doing these for now. That being said, I hope you enjoyed watching today's episode. And you know what? If you have any ideas of something that you would like to see next week, please be my guest. Comment it down below, and I'll see what I can do for you. How does that sound? And while you're down there, why don't you click that like button? You know, such a tiny thing could pad such a frail, frail ego. Really makes my day, you know? Anyways, I really hope you enjoyed this episode, and I also hope that you learned something about magma, and I also hope you'll join me next week, for whatever the hell it is I'll end up doing. But until then, you bearded bastards!